Aotearoa Square in Auckland with cinemas and a park that's currently closed because someone is building something. Now, welcome to a new video and this time around it's a comparison video between the Xperia 10 Mark II versus the OnePlus Nord and what we want to compare here with those two phones are the cameras on the back mainly because the front facing camera yeah will do some shots as well but mainly the backside um, cameras and they have different uh, resolutions here we have the 12 megapixel main sensor here we have a 48 megapixel main sensor and we have 8 megapixel ultra wide 8 megapixel ultra wide but we also have an 8 megapixel telephoto here that is missing from the oneplus so how does this then compare with each other especially if you use the crop function on the oneplus to zoom in I will show you this in detail now in my photo analysis after I took some photos with both of those devices and we will see which of those devices takes the better photos. So one thing that we clearly can see with the OnePlus Nord's back camera is that it has HDR enabled most of the time of the shots which creates a brighter shot most of the time and you can see it here with our Terra Square where we uh, captured some photos that it is a bit of deceiving the difference um, what I see with my eyes and what it captured because what it captured is a high dynamic range and this uh, uh, old sign here which is like standing there was really really captured by the sun and uh, the rest was darkish and this is the more realistic way this is why i wanted to capture it and sadly with the oneplus nord i couldn't because it made everything look like almost the same and there's still a little bit of uh, sun um, shining on the object but it is not the same way as when i would like uh, took the photo with the xperia 10 mark ii which creates this dramatic effect that i saw with my eyes clearly so it has some benefits but also some negative points here when you record uh, or capture photos with the oneplus nord and uh, yeah this all always enabled hdr is a bit like uh, sometimes it produces really really good looking images but it has nothing to do with reality how you can really see so if you want something that creates a beautiful image of something not even a photo because photo is basically what you see there and what it takes is like a photo and edits it automatically in a way that it always is not what you see really with your eyes but what you would like to see or what would like look best uh, when you photograph something so I hope you can hear me still because there's some music going on here there's a stage in the background here as you can see are playing some music and definitely the microphone will pick something up hopefully it will not block uh, will be blocked on youtube for this uh, so um, yeah this is what i noticed with the oneplus nord that it has this hdr look almost everywhere and everything looks bright and this contrast between shadows really harsh dark shadows and something that is really really light in the photos you need to turn off HDR for this otherwise the automatic capturing will then produce something that you maybe did not want to capture the way the OnePlus captured it on the other hand most of the time people will be very happy with this HDR mode on the OnePlus Nord in contrast to the Xperia 10 Mark II that has uh, yeah, issues sometimes when taking photos with the main camera shooting against the sun or shooting against some bright object it will darken the foreground and it is sometimes not wanted of course you have the option to go into manual mode and activate hdr here on the xperia 10 mark ii manually you can leave everything the rest in automatic and you have to think about it 
So this is one step more that you have to do with the one the Xperia 10 Mark II that you don't have to do with the OnePlus Nord. On the other hand, what is... I don't know. I'm a bit in conflict. You can write down what you like better. Automatic HDR or something where you can manually turn on HDR if you want it, really. Yeah, this is my first conclusion when it comes to taking pictures and uh, HDR mode. And in general, the Xperia 10 Mark II creates uh, photos which are more capturing the reality. The OnePlus Nord does editing. It captures reality and then edits the image to create something which is more artificial. And the Xperia 10 Mark II captures reality. And if you want to edit later, you have to do it by yourself. Or you can, of course, have the freedom of manually uh, changing stuff. You can do this on the Xperia 10 Mark II, but also on the OnePlus Nord. But I'm focusing more on the automatic stuff here. What we can do with simple steps, because I'm running around here. Of course, if I have the time, I can set up everything manually. And I probably will also test, do a test when it comes to uh, how much uh, difference is there in terms of software and manual modes. But when it comes to uh, the uh, automatic mode, this is most of the time what users use. They just point and shoot. And maybe they set the different camera. And here you can set a different camera. You can go to manual mode if you need HDR. But it's an extra step that you don't have to do on OnePlus Nord. On the other hand, on the OnePlus Nord, you have to then live with the HDR look. Yeah, so these are my impressions when it comes to OnePlus Nord and Xperia 10 Mark II. And uh, I think I will shoot some more uh, photos here. So let's take a look at color reproduction on those two phones. Just like with the contrast and dynamic range, the OnePlus Nord saturates the colors a lot more. They pop a bit more. You can see it here on the oranges. But you can also see it on this 8-bit do controller I photographed. Here you can see the more in terms of color and the higher saturation on the OnePlus. Everyone who knows the controller would say the OnePlus One does not look quite right. It's a bit too dark and contrasty. You can also see it here in the food stand. The OnePlus has more puppy colors and the HDR effect again. It also changes the font of the signs. As you can see, they are a lot thicker on the OnePlus Nord photo. The more pleasing image is definitely the OnePlus, I would say. It looks more dramatic. But which is the more accurate photo? It would be the Sony, I would say. When it comes to zooming, the OnePlus does a good job to keep up with the dedicated Xperia zoom sensor. Sometimes, especially in lower light situations, when the zoom camera does not kick in on the Xperia, the OnePlus even has an advantage in details due to the more in pixels. When it comes to the ultra-wide, they are basically the same. There's not much of a difference to see here. When it comes to selfies, the OnePlus's 32 megapixel hands down creates more bright and detailed photos than the 8 megapixel on the Sony. OnePlus also has an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle on the front to help capture more in the frame. The Xperia on the other side offers HDR and night mode on the front facing camera. Taking a look at videos with the main camera, the OnePlus has an advantage again. The stabilization is way more efficient and videos look more fluid, whereas the Xperia seems to struggle a bit with stabilization and sometimes loses some frames when doing pans. So this is now test recording with the Xperia 10 Mark II front-facing camera, 8 megapixels. It only has one camera on the front, so you don't get the super wide angle that you can get on the OnePlus Nord. And it's in 1080p, 30 frames per second, because this is what the front-facing camera can do on the Xperia 10 Mark II. It can also go further, but I want to compare it to 1080p and uh, 
Yeah, because I think uh, it makes uh, more sense uh, when it comes to stabilization because stabilization works better in 1080p and uh, editing files in 1080p is still uh, key here. So uh, I can uh, just show you also the OnePlus Nord. I can uh, blend it over here so you have an impression of the OnePlus Nord's main camera and of course the super wide angle camera on the front which is an advantage for the OnePlus Nord. So well, tell me what you think about the front-facing camera. Is it good for vlogging, for uh, taking videos and selfies? Uh, just write it in the comment section. So now we're on a super wide-angle camera on the Xperia 10 Mark II. And uh, I will of course blend in the uh, OnePlus Nord as well, so you can compare it in terms of wide-angle, which one has the wider angle. And in terms of stabilization, colors and uh, uh, dynamic range and uh, yeah um, you can write in the comments section what you think is the best video camera for video capturing also for vlogging and so on i think the back camera and the super wide angle one on the xperia 10 mark ii at least if you have enough light just like here right now is uh, pretty good uh, so far so i'm happy when it comes to uh, recording something with this camera here In night mode the cameras behave a little like in daylight if there is enough light. So the OnePlus has a stronger contrast, more punchier colors and overall more warm kind of look. The Xperia 10 Mark II sometimes struggles with overblowing highlights and seems to not balance out light and dark parts of the image as good as the OnePlus. Noise keeps creeping in a bit quicker on the Xperia, which leads to a noise filter being more aggressive than on the OnePlus. Night mode in general produces similar results, though when you zoom in a bit in night shots you notice more noise on the Xperia. The OnePlus tends to sometimes add a bit too much contrast into a shot when there is some light source and makes it look darker than it really is. Sony keeps it more real but overblows highlights a bit. The Xperia allows you to use the telephoto zoom camera with night mode which is unavailable for the OnePlus. So the telephoto needs clearly more light to be really useful. A lot of noise is reduced with a noise filter and you can clearly see the lack of details. Taking a look at the ultra wide angle, both devices are able to shoot night mode photos in them. And again, the OnePlus is a bit more contrasty and darker in the shadows, where the Sony brightens up them a bit more, but has more overblown lights and definitely struggles a lot with noise, which is visible as soon as you zoom in a bit. In general, the ultra wide angle on both devices should be avoided, but the OnePlus hands down offers the better quality here. The Xperia's night mode has clearly the longer capturing time, which sometimes can lead to shakier photos with a lack of sharpness. OnePlus handles this way better as it takes a fast shot, but takes roughly the same time as the Xperia captures the shot to process it. Videos in nighttime are visibly less noisy and sharper on the OnePlus Nord. The Xperia 10 Mark II struggles sometimes with focusing and has overblown highlights. So that's it for my camera review and comparison between the Xperia 10 Mark II and the OnePlus Nord. So what do you think? Did you expect them to be so close together in terms of image quality or further apart? And what is your conclusion? What, which photos are or images are the best produced by either the OnePlus Nord or the Xperia 10 Mark II? You can write it down in the comment section. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and until the next time. Bye.